Papaya is a perennial fruit tree widely cultivated in tropical and subtropical climates for its nutritional and medicinal values. It is very popular in Kenya where it is grown for both local and export markets. Popo fruits are sold and eaten locally as fresh fruit with high demand from the hotels, local grocery, fruit salad vendors, supermarkets and export market. The fruits are dried and exported as part of a dried fruit mixture. Popo production can be very profitable and rewarding for a farmer even on a small parcel of land. Farmers from Goliba in Thika have discovered this venture and they are taking the opportunity. Mimi naitwa bwana Kifogo wa Mahio. Kuzaliwa ni huko Nyeri. Nikasomea Nyeri ya Kaja Secondary School. Alafu nikaenda levels uh, Bugoma na Itiri High School. Alafu baadaye nikaenda Maseno Siriba Teachers College. Nikafanya diploma in education. Kutoka hapo nikaanza kazi ya kufunza huko Makueni. Finally nikarudi na huku Padwa Central. Na nikakuja hapa Goriba, nikakuja kuanzisha shule ya Goriba Secondary School. Na hapo diyo ni leweza kununua hii shaba. Wakati nununua shaba hapa, hapa ni mahali kwa kiagazi saa zigine. Na nikaona ile jia mzuri ya kukana hii shaba ni kupada matuda. Kwa sababu saa zigine unapada maharagwe, ma, maidi, zinakauka. Na kwa hivyo nikaanza kupanda machungwa kama mulivyoona pale. Alafu baadaye nikaona naweza pada ma, madizi, nikapada madizi ya tisho kacha. Nikaenda nikanunua huko eh, Jomo Kenyatta University, Jaikwat, na nikakuja nikapanda. Na hizo madizi zikafanya vizuri sana. Na kwa hivyo nikaona tena nipanue biashara ya kilimo, nika nikaamua nipade mapapai. Na hapa tumesimama dio hiyo shaba ya mapapai. On his three-acre land, Wamahio, a school principal and a farmer, has practiced mixed farming, where he grows bananas, oranges, mangoes, and popos. Kuna ikamoja amadizi, igine amachugwa, mahali kidogo ni mebakisha ya kupada maidi, diyo nisiwe naomba maibi, maidi ya kukula, ya kuchoma, alafu uyo ika ingine diyo yu ni meweka mapapai. Different communities in Kenya have the traditional crops that they have grown over time. He is an example that due to changing times, people must accept to diversify and grow more viable crops such as fruits, which are more profitable. Iko kijana nilikuwa nafunza, uh, anafanya, anafanya na Agri, Agri Africa, anaitua Francis Kamau. Nikuwa tukua shule, tukua tunamuita Kamuamba. Kamuamba haka kuja, haka nielezea, haka nisaidia na haka niambia mapapai na yazakuwa ni biyashara mzuri. Na kwa hivyo, nikakuja, nikatarisha shaba, nikaweka hile kiwango inatakikana, nikachiba mashimo, alafu nikaenda nikanunua mapapai, seedlings. Nilienda nikatafuta mahali watu wameka mapapai vizuri, na diko nikakuja nikapanda. Kama hizi nilipanda mwaka uliopita, mwezi wa, wa, wa kumina moja, na saa hii, kama unaviona, ni mapapai hiko tayari uh, ku, 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 kuvunwa, na kupelekwa kwa soko. Tayari nimepeleka mara kadhaa na sio biashara baya. Sasa hii nataka ikue mfano kwa wale watu tumepakana na wao hapa na hii kijiji yote ya Goriba. Waone ya kwamba 
e, sio lazima upade maharagwe na, ma, na maidi yenye saa zingine iko na adui wengi mapapai haina adui wengi na hata kama ita, 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 ita shikwa na, 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 na shida fulani at least utapata kuharvest kidogo na yenye inaweza kupeleka hata ununue hiyo maidi na ununue maharagwe kwa hivyo na, na kwa hiyo shaba ya mapapai hata kabla haijashikana kabisa utakuwa umepada maidi na maharagwe bado utaweka kama vile mnaona iko na kwa hivyo hiyo shaba inakuwa inatumika vizuri na hii ni njia moja ya kungangana na jaa ya kukabiliana na, na ukosefu wa chakula nchini kama watu wanaweza iga uh, huu mfano e, nchi yetu inaweza kuwa self sustaining uh, kwa chakula climatic conditions for popos papaya cannot withstand prolonged drought an even distributed annual rainfall is suitable irrigation should be done in low rainfall regions the crop does well in light, well-drained soils and rich in nutrients. Roots are very sensitive to water logging. Papaya thrives in warm to hot regions of temperature between 20 to 30 degrees centigrade. Fruit is sweeter when grown during warm, sunny season. Francis, an agronomist from Agri-Africa, working with farmers in this region, explains to us why this region befits popo farming. As an agronomist, we decided to help farmers in, here in Kakuzi location and uh, even within other counties. So today we are talking about the popo agribusiness, whereby we have identified conducive and favorable ecological conditions that favor popo farming and that can enhance productivity in uh, th this venture. So the ag climatic conditions of this, of this area that favors the popo, one is the rainfall that is 1,200 millimeters per annum the area is characterized by temperatures of average temperatures of 27 degrees whereby it's a good it's a good good temperature because they, the popos perform well between the range of 21 degrees to 33 degrees so an average of 27 minus or plus 6 when you come to rainfall the soil within the, this locality it is loam soil it is well drained it is light with good organic matter. Seeds can be sown directly in the field or first raised in nursery beds, in polythene bags or in containers. Careful handling of seedlings is important in order to avoid disturbing the roots. Mara kwanza nilienda nikanunua mbegu, seedlings zikiwa tayari. Then later alone nika nunua mbegu, nikakuja nikamwaga nikaweka kwa nasari for zinaka hapo for about 2 weeks alafu kutoka hapo ninaweka mchaga vizuri kwa karatasi ukiwa umechanganya manyua na e, loam soils alafu some bit of sand kwa sababu mapapa inataka joto sana e, alafu kutoka kwa kuweka kwa karatasi inakaa kama miezi miwili alafu una, unatoa hapo unapeleka kwa shaba so when we are advising the farmers in this area, we tell them to sow seeds from certified partners or institutions like the Ugly Africa, whereby we as consultants, we source the seeds from the corporate institution like CARO, whereby we establish the seedlings and we sell to the farmers. So here we advise the farmers when they are planting, when they are getting the seedlings, or when they want to establish their own seedlings, because sometimes we train them on the capacity building, whereby they can be able to establish their own seedlings and also sell to, to other farmers, whereby they can be able to earn an extra income. We tell them to select the nursery site, it should be, it should not be waterlogged. And uh, also, the site should be, the soil should be rich in organic matter because those seedlings 
that is the critical time that we need to see quality seedlings that will perform when they are transplanted in the field. So in the site selection, after you have planted the, seed, the seeds, the requirement is you plant between the rows in the nursery, you, you leave 15 centimeters and beneath the ground you put a seed at a depth of two centimeters. Then the seeds will have established within two weeks. By then they will be having two to three leaves. Then you transplant to the polybags. The polybags, the soil, the soil in the polybags, it need to be to have enough of organic matter. You mix with manure. You mix with a, a bit of NPK fertilizer to enhance fertility of the soil and to provide enough nutrients in the soil that will be fed to the to the seedlings. So after two months when the, the seedlings have been, the seedlings that have been pre cut from the nursery have been transported to the poly bags, they will have attained four to five leaves and then that is after two, two months. The agronomists take us through critical steps that should be observed, such as one, preparing planting holes which should be 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters, three meters apart. Second, mixing of the topsoil with manure and DAP. After we have dug a hole of two feet by two feet by two feet, we separate one third of the soil. We put one third of the topsoil, we put it on the upper side. Then the other soil, it's the subsoil. We put it on the left hand side. So when you are taking the manure, plus the 25 grams of NPK, you can decide on 1717, uh, you mix with the topsoil, then you return the, 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 the mixture in the soil, you cover the seedling well, well, you farm, then you water. After one month, for three consecutive months, we advise the farmers to apply 25 grams of NPK every month, every month. We have prepared a planting hole, two, uh, two, meet, two feet by two feet by two feet. We have separated the topsoil from the subsoil. So the topsoil you put on the right hand side, the subsoil you put on the left hand side. Then you have your manure, you put two, two debes, you mix with the topsoil, you mix well with the topsoil, you mix well with the topsoil, these are two debes. Then you pick 25 grams of NPK. Then you mix the soil, the alary, you mix the alary. You see how we are mixing? You mix the alary, you mix the alary with the NPK. The importance of this manure and the NPK 25 grams, it is because you want to supply these young plants with enough food that it is it will be able to feed when it is in this hole. You can see the size of the seedling that is supposed to be planted, this size. So you pick your well-mixed well, well mixed soil, NPK, plus your manure. You scoop, you put a little bit in the ground to avoid the hard pan. Then, after you are, you've done that, you pick your seedling, you press very well, press very well, like a farmer, don't avoid to get dirty. Put it at the center. You put now your soil, you put your soil, you farm, you return the whole of it. You farm well. After it is farm now, you can return all your soil. Turn all your topsoil that has been mixed with the 
and PK and manure. Then, after all that, the seedling is okay. You water it. You water it from in the early morning or in the evening. That is from 4 p.m. Kwa shaba unatakiwa kuchiba mashimo kutoka laini moja mpaka igine inataka 3 meters. Kutoka kwa mumea moja mpaka mwingine kwa laini, kwa laini moja inataka 2 meters. Alafu sasa unachanganya the top soils with some manure. Alafu unaweka fertilizer na unapada. Unachanganya vizuri unapada. Sasa hapo unaweza endelea kupalilia mapapai after sometimes kama miezi mbili hivi miezi mbili mitatu unaweza top dress na kutoka hapo sasa ni kuachilia ikue e, mapapai inaenda two seasons ukipanda mvua hii itaanza kuzaa mvua ile ingine na kwa hivyo after uh, within a year you will have started harvesting kutoka kwa laini hii na hii ndio tulisema uh, three meters kutoka kwa muti hapa na pale is about uh, two meters na you can see there is uh, a lot of space in between due to big gaps required in popo farming Wamahio has intercropped with other crops like beans which she teaches us that are neither competitors to popos but complements by adding nitrogen to the soil Eh uh, ukiangalia hii shaba sasa huwezi ukapada mimea yenye ita ita itarefuka ita kama maidi kwa sababu itaanza ku compete na mapapai lakini maharagwe vile yuko chini eh uh, unaona hiyo itakuwa vizuri na wale ambao mnajua eh, maharagwe yako na lot of nitrogen na kwa hivyo inaweza kuongezea rotuba kwa mchanga nitrogen kwa mchanga I grow uh, beans in order to utilize the space maximize uh, the use of lard and uh, it's good because they don't comp the, the beans and uh, the, the purpose don't compete and therefore uh, you get a lot of benefits from uh, from your lad a crop like beans it is leguminous in nature so it it produces a nitrogen so it will fix a lot of nitrogen in the atmosphere it will fix it in the soil it will be con the nitrogen will be converted into nitrates and then this popo they benefit with the, from the nitrogen so there will be that mutual benefit of uh, beans supp supply nutrients to the popos. And in the long run, there will be no competition. And also when you come to, it also help in the matters of conserving uh, weeding. For example, when, you are, when the beans forms a canopy, you will realize that you will not incur extra cost for weeding because the beans have already formed a canopy that has smoothed the weeds. So you will not need to buy chemical expensive chemicals like paraquat so you will use that biological method control with so that's how we are trying to sustain these farmers to promote to revelage the level in, of income in their farms crop management in popo plants requires agrochemicals such as npk and foliar to counter deficiency and infections so after umepada um, miti mepata zile miche eh, every every month unaweka ka fertilizer kidogo 25 grams ya NPK unaendelea mwezi wa pili wa tatu alafu saa hiyo muti utaona tayari umekoma ume na umeuko size ya kubeba kubeba matuda then eh, after that unaweza piga dawa foria ya, ya, ya kufanya ma, majani ya kuwe green na uki kunaweza kuwa na wadudu na kuna baridi dawa ya baridi naweza piga dawa ndio uzuie wadudu na bado upige foria ya kutengeneza majani then kutoka hapo unaendelea uki, ukipalilia and mwezi wa saba inaanza kuflower 
then uh, hapo ikianza kuflawa unahitaji uh, kupiga ile dawa ndio matuda is ya boot then uh, kutoka hapo matuda mwezi wa, 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 wa tisa, kumi, matuda tayari iko tayari kuharvestiwa we also advise farmers to do monitoring whereby the farmer is supposed to go to the field identify where they are pests identify whether the purpose are affected by the frost because frost is a main challenge to the popo to popo agribusiness you we advise the farmers to spray agrochemicals like redomil can spray even agromax also if you identify some pests like even the mites you can apply chemicals like miticide the acaride cones to prevent those mites they are pathogens that transmit diseases to the popo so when the popo will be ripening we'll realize that the popo has some some dots and such popos cannot enter into the market so after now the eighth, the seventh week when they start flowering we also advise the farmer to repeat again with uh, the same foliar fertilizer, insecticide, and the fungicide to control fungal diseases. So you can even choose to, to spray with a, with a foliar like power grow. You can even choose, or you can alternate with omex. It is well and good. So when they are, they are flowering, you'll be able to control those mites and even the drips that sometimes attack the, the purpose. Papaya plants start flowering five to eight months after planting and fruits are ready for harvesting approximately two months after the flowering stage. Kwa hivyo wakati wa kuharvest unaenda unaangalia yale matunda yamepata ragi ya yellowish kidogo na hapo ndio unaona hii hilo tunda limekomaa. Alafu sasa hapo unakata vizuri unaweza twist ama ukate na, na kisu na uweke mahali ya bako haitafinywa mapapai hayapedi kufinyana inataka iwekwe ibebwe ina way that haitafinyana ndio ikifika kwa soko isiwe imeharibika na alafu you maintain the quality ile kutoka kwa shaba ukiwagalia huu mpapai utaona umezaa vizuri na huu utaendelea kuzaa for about uh, two years na utakuwa umekupea mapapai na income ya kutosha uh, kuvuna mapapai una twist hivi unakata pole pole na kuna ingine upande huu mwingine hata hii you, you can see the yellow the yellow color hii ni kumaanisha this one is ready pamoja na hii ingine it has a yellow color